So we hear in Daniel today about this uh, dream of Nebuchadnezzar, and you, you may remember that this comes about where he has this dream and he asks all the wise people of his uh, of his nation to be able to see what this dream means. But he says, not just tell me what the dream means, tell me what the dream is as well. Because anyone can make up an interpretation. And they're like, we can't figure this out. And so Daniel prays and he comes to, to Nebuchadnezzar and says, here is your vision, here is the dream you said. So he explains the dream completely and then he explains what it means. Um, and he gets all sorts of power, although they don't talk about that in, in the uh, reading today. And it's showing that there will be, it's prophesying the different kingdoms that will come. Uh, the fourth kingdom is strong as iron, and then, uh, but then it'll be taught together with uh, potter's tile, and that's the uh, Roman Empire that eventually will come at the time of Jesus. And then there will be the stone, not hewn by man, that will destroy it all, take down those kingdoms, and will become a great mountain that will last forever, that last kingdom that will be no end. Almighty God, His kingdom moving in our land. We look even, um, as, as we look at the church for 2,000 years, if it were a human institution like every other human institution or nation or empire or kingdom, it would have fallen apart by now. Kingdoms come and go, emperor, empires fall. But our faith continues because it's grounded in the Holy Spirit started by Almighty God. Later in the book of Daniel, uh, not only does, do they give this prophecy about the different um, uh, kingdoms that will come, but also it will talk, he will actually give a specific timeline, which is why people were actually expecting the Messiah to come, and there were all sorts of claimants to be Messiah at the time of Jesus. Um, and so, but there was an expectation. Because Daniel even gave a timeline for when Jesus was to come. Amazing, and yet people still don't believe. Ah, funny. Um, but we look and then Jesus also gives his own prophecy today in the gospel. You see all that's here? As he's talking about the temple. The day will come where there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. And it's true because when they eventually came to destroy Jerusalem, after they besieged it, they came in and uh, the commanding officer didn't want them to set the temple on fire. But they set the temple on fire anyways. And with setting the temple on fire, then all the gold in the temple then melted. And he was hoping to be able to just take the gold out of the temple, but it all melted and fell in between the rocks and in, in the crevices of everything. So they then tore down, after everything was said and done, they tore down the temple stone by stone in order to get all the gold that had melted in there. So Jesus knew what was going to happen. And he's talking about all this. And sometimes we can look at the destruction in the world and the evil that's out there, but he says... But do not be terrified. Do not be afraid. So often we let all these things, the, the tearing away of our own comfortable lifestyle, the way that we're used to living, the way things we expect to have happen when that's all torn away from us, we can be afraid. But we have to know all things work for good for those who love God. This is the promise of Almighty God. All things work for good for those who love God. And if we entrust ourselves into His hands, we do not need to be afraid. Now, does that mean that we're not going to have the gut reaction of fear? Of course. Well, that's just natural, you know. Someone comes driving into a parade and killing people and hurting others. Of course, there's going to be that gut reaction of fear, the natural bodily reaction. But there's a difference between that and living in fear, where we allow fear to lead us. And God says to us, do not be afraid. It doesn't matter how evil things look in the world. I have conquered the world. We look to the cross. It looked like they conquered Jesus on Friday. It looked like they'd conquered Jesus on Saturday. But then Sunday came. 
and he rose from the dead, he was able to show that he conquered all that evil in the world that looked like it had conquered him. And Jesus invites us. He says, do not be terrified. Do not be afraid. Do not allow fear to lead you. But rather, surrender to me. And I will break through that fear. I will break the power of that fear. And I will show you how even the darkest evil that comes and attacks your life, I will change for a greater good. May we allow the Lord of love to transform our lives. May we cling to him and not to our own way of thinking, our own way of doing things, uh, our own way of being comfortable, but rather surrender to him whose love conquers all fear, who says to us, all things work for good for those who love God.